uh, in this section we are going to discuss about the cartilages of the larynx uh, just know that uh, the larynx has got in total nine cartilages uh, this is constituted by three paired cartilage and three unpaired cartilage which together constitute a total of nine cartilages we'll discuss it one by one first cartilage we are going to discuss about is the thyroid cartilage of the larynx so we will be drawing the diagram first so the thyroid cartilage is consisting of two laminae these are the right and left lamina so we will draw the each laminae first this is one lamina and this is the other one So these are the two laminae of the thyroid cartilage. This is the right lamina, this is the left lamina. When we look at each lamina, each lamina has got an anterior border and a posterior border. So the uh, posterior border is having two projections here. So this upward projection is known as the superior corner and the downward projection is the inferior corner. So now how the thyroid looks like? So a thyroid is formed by actually uh, this two laminae fused together in the midline like this so it fuses in such a way that the upper part of the anterior border does not completely fuse does not completely fuse the upper part of the anterior border does not completely fuse whereas the lower part fuses completely so the upper part of the anterior border does not completely fuse resulting in a notch here what is this notch which is formed in the upper part that is also called that is called thyroid notch thyroid notch and the, the lower part of the anterior border fuses in the midline producing a median projection this median projection is called laryngeal prominence laryngeal prominence so actually uh, these two lamina meet anteriorly at an angle so the anterior borders of the two laminae are meeting at an angle. This angle is 90 degree in males and 120 degree in females. So we know that upper to the um, thyroid cartilage we have the hyoid bone which is lying like this. This is a greater corner of the hyoid bone and down you have the cricoid cartilage here this is a cricoid cartilage this is the hyoid bone now this part which is a, the posterior border of each of this lamina is free and these do not approach each other now the posterior border of the lamina has got an upward projection this upward projection is called the superior corner of the thyroid superior corner thyroid this is called the inferior corner of thyroid now the superior corner of thyroid It, it is connected to the greater corner of the hyoid bone by means of ligament which is known as lateral thyrohyoid ligament. Superior corner is connected to the greater corner of hyoid bone by means of a ligament. This ligament is known as the lateral thyrohyoid ligament. Lateral thyrohyoid ligament. ligament now the inferior corner is articulating with the 
lamina of the cricoid forming the cricothyroid joint so this is the cricothyroid joint now if you look at each of this lamina the lateral part of the each of this lamina is having an oblique line which is extending from the superior thyroid tubercle to the inferior thyroid tubercle the superior thyroid tubercle is located at the root of the superior cornea the inferior thyroid tubercle is located behind the middle of the inferior border so joining these two tubercles there is an oblique line tubercle there is an oblique line here So this oblique line, this is called the oblique line of thyroid, oblique line of thyroid. So what is the importance of this oblique line? To this oblique line, two structures are attached. One is the inferior constrictor of pharynx and thyrohyoid. Now, to the inferior border and also the inferior corner of the thyroid, a triangular muscle is attached like this. This triangular muscle is known as, which muscle it is between the cricoid and thyroid. It is originating from the cricoid cartilage and inserting into the inferior border and the inferior corner of thyroid. That is called the cricothyroid muscle. Now, to the posterior border between the superior corner and the inferior corner, to the posterior border which are structures are attached. So, the structures attached here are ending with pharynges. So, this will include the stylopharynges, salpingopharynges and the palatal pharynges. So, these are the structures which are attached along the posterior border. So, structures attached on the inner aspect of the thyroid cartilage include the vocal fold, the vestibular fold, and thyroepiglottic muscle and thyroepiglottic ligament, etc. So, that's all about the thyroid cartilage. So, this is the thyroid cartilage. So this is the thyroid cartilage. Now we will see the next cartilage. The next cartilage is the cricoid cartilage. So this is the cricoid cartilage. So actually it is a, it is more thickest than the thyroid cartilage. And it fold it it is arranged like a ring around the larynx. So we look at the diagram. This is the thyroid cartilage. Okay, this is the arch. So if this is the so it is arranged like a ring along the larynx. It is located in the lower part of the thyroid cartilage. So the anterior most portion of the cricoid is narrow and the narrowest anterior portion is known as the arch. And the posterior aspect is expanded and it is like a lamina that is called the lamina of the cricoid. So this is the anterior view and if we take the posterior view we see that it is arranged like this
so this is a thyroid cartilage and uh, when we view the uh, lamina of the cricoid cartilage the lamina of the cricoid cartilage extends uh, superiorly behind the thyroid cartilage it extends behind the thyroid cartilage like this and the lateral aspect of the lamina is articulating with the inferior cone of the thyroid forming the cricothyroid joint So what you see here is the posterior most portion of the cricoid which is called the lamina of the cricoid and the upper part of lamina of the cricoid is articulating with another cartilage that is this another cartilage is known as the arytenoid cartilage so this is the arytenoid so the upper part of the cricoid, lamina of the cricoid articulates with the base of the arytenoid forming which joint here? This is the cricoarytenoid joint. Cricoarytenoid joint. So superiorly it articulates with arytenoid and inferiorly it articulates with the inferior corner of the thyroid. So it forms two joints here that is cricothyroid and cricoarytenoid. So which are the structures attached here? Oh, sorry, which are the muscles originating from the cricoid? So, anteriorly from the arch, one muscle which is originating and getting inserted into the inferior border and the inferior corner of thyroid. So, anterior aspect or arch gives origin to which muscle? That is the cricothyroid muscle, that is the triangular muscle, cricothyroid. And from the lamina of the cricoid, Thyroid, which muscle is originating that is from the anterolateral aspect which muscle is originating so from the anterolateral aspect which muscle is originating this is from the anterolateral aspect which muscle is originating so this muscle is known as the lateral Cricoarytenoid from the lateral anterolateral aspect, lateral cricoarytenoid muscle is originated and this gets inserted into the muscular process of the arytenoid cartilage. And from the posterior aspect, that is on the outer aspect of lamina, one muscle which is originating that muscle is known as the posterior cricoarytenoid which is known as the safety muscle posterior cricoarytenoid so these are the three muscles which are originating from the cricoid cartilage one is the cricothyroid from the arch and from the lateral anterolateral aspect there is lateral cricoarytenoid and from the outer aspect of lamina there is posterior cricoarytenoid so that's all about the cricoid cartilage. Now we will be discussing about the epiglottis. So we will discuss about the epiglottis. That's another one. So this is one of the untired cartilages of the larynx. So look at the epiglottis here through the picture. So if this is the hyoid bone, this is the greater bone of the hyoid. What you see here? is the thyroid if this is the cricoid this is the anterior aspect you are seeing here the anterior aspect if you look at the posterior aspect here Here is the posterior aspect, this is the lamina of cricoid, and this is the arytenoid. So what you see here is a leaf shaped single cartilage which is seen in the anterior most portion of the upper part of the larynx, that leaf shaped structure. So this is known as the epiglottis. 
you can see here this is thyroid hyaline membrane above this you can see the epiglottis uh, which is projecting upwards so it is projecting upwards behind the hyoid bone and the tongue so it is a leaf shaped single uh, cartilage which is located in the anterior wall of the upper part of the larynx so you can see that by looking at this you can see that the upper end is broad and it is free and the lower end or the stalk is pointed it is pointed and is attached to the upper part upper part of the angle between the two laminae of the thyroid cartilage so this right and left margins of this gives attachment to array epiglottic fold so here is attached the array epiglottic fold epiglottic fold is attached to the margins so now take the anterior most portion this is the anterior aspect so what do you see behind the hyoid bone is the anterior aspect it is attached to the tongue by means of a medial uh, glosso epiglottic fold the anterior surface is attached to the tongue by means of a median glosso epiglottic fold Now it is attached to the hyoid bone by means of a hyoepiglottic ligament. Hyoepiglottic ligament. That's all about the anterior surface. Now looking at the posterior surface, the posterior surface is covered with a mucous membrane and it has a tubercle the lower part. This is the posterior uh, part. So this is the posterior view. So the posterior surface is having mucous membrane and is having a tubercle in the lower part now between the cartilage and the thyroid another muscle which is attached between the cartilage and the thyroid that muscle between the uh, epiglottis and thyroid that is called the thyroepiglottic muscle epiglottic muscle and it is attached to the margins of the epiglottis and between the thyroid cartilage and the margins of the epiglottis so it keeps the inlet open during breathing so and there is also another muscle attached between the epiglottis and the arytenoid that is called the array epiglottic muscle that closes the inlet during swallowing another muscle is the array epiglottic muscle which is attached to the epiglottis glottic muscle so that closes the opening during swallowing. So these are the two muscles attached. So the structures attached to so the anterior surface is having medium close epiglottic fold and high epiglottic ligament. Two muscles are thyroepiglottic muscle and array epiglottic. Attached to the margins are array epiglottic folds. Now we will be discussing about the other cartilage which is a we will discuss about the paired cartilage list. So far we have discussed about the unpaired cartilage. The three unpaired cartilages are thyroid, cricoid and the epiglottis. Now we will start with the paired cartilages. One such paired cartilage is the arachnoid. So which is the arachnoid. We have seen that from the anterior view. So this is the anterior view. Sorry, this is supposed to you. Epiglottis, and we will also see the lateral view here of the thyroid. So this is lateral view. You can see the lateral view of the arachnoid here. So these are the two paired cartilages. So this is the arachnoid. These are the two arachnoids here. So these are the two pyramid shaped cartilages. And these are located in the upper border of the lamina of the cricoid. This is the cricoid. So the arachnoid is located in the upper border of lamina of the cricoid. So it has got an apex and it has got a base. And the base is resting on the 
upper board of the cricoid and the apex is attached to the conculate cartilage. Conculate cartilage. Now, uh, what are the parts of the uh, arachnoid cartilage? Now, uh, look at this. It has got an apex and the base, and anteriorly it has got an extension. It has got a process which is known as the vocal process, and posteriorly it has got a process. This process is called the muscular process. Muscular process and vocal process are there. So what are the structures attached to the vocal process? To the vocal process, the vocal folds and the vocalis muscles are attached. Vocal folds and vocalis muscles. To the muscular process, uh, to the anterior part of this muscular process, posterior, the anterior part of the muscular process gives attachment to lateral cricoarachnoid. And the posterior part of the muscular process gives attachment to the posterior cricoarachnoid. Cricoarachnoid. So above the vocal process, the vestibular folds are also attached. Vestibular folds are also attached. Now, and on the posterior surface. Between the two arachnoids, the transverse arachnoid is also attached. So, on the posterior aspect between the arachnoid, the transverse arachnoids are also attached. Transverse arachnoids. Now, other paired cartilages are one is the colliculate cartilage. So, from the name, it is a conical cartilage. It is a conical cartilage which is attached to the apex of the arachnoid cartilage. So, this is a conical cartilage which is attached to the apex and it is lying in the posterior aspect of the array epiglottic fold. So, this is the array epiglottic fold. It is lying in the posterior aspect of the array epiglottic fold. And it is directed posterior medially. So it is conical in shape. It is attached to apex of the arachnoid. Next paired one is the cuneiform cartilage. So the cuneiform cartilages are the rod shaped cartilage. This is also placed in the array epiglottic fold and it is ventral to the cornucular cartilage. So these are the pair of rod shaped cartilage lie in the array epiglottic fold ventral to the corniculate cartilage lie in the array epiglottic fold so we have learned about the cartilages of the larynx which includes the three unpaired cartilages like thyroid cricoid and epiglottis and three paired cartilages that is the arachnoid corniculate and cuneiform together this constitute nine cartilages of the larynx. We have seen about the muscles and structures attached to each of this cartilage. So that's all about the cartilages of the larynx. Thank you for watching this video. To see more videos on the channel, please subscribe the channel. Thank you.